So I was speaking with a group of friends a few days ago at a social event. These are 20 interesting, diverse solo entrepreneurs, consultants, and coaches. So the hot subject for discussion today was how overwhelmed, beat, tired, and burned out many of the people were feeling due to too much to do, can't stop now syndrome. Are you one of those people who can't seem to stop doing? I have yet to meet anyone who hasn't felt overwhelmed from time to time. Since it tends to feel uncomfortable, if not downright unpleasant, we tend to view it as negative and as a weakness. We've convinced ourselves that if we can't do it all, then somehow we're failing. After all, everyone else seems to be able to juggle 12 balls in the air, work full time, get kids where they need to be, prepare for an upcoming presentation to the board of directors, and get to the gym all without breaking a sweat. We don't dare to admit we're overwhelmed or dare to talk about it, which can leave us feeling isolated and alone. This is further excavating the feeling that we often deny we are overwhelmed because we do not know how to stop the frantic behavior that leads to this feeling. So we do nothing. Our employers, our colleagues, and our friends, they don't help support to stop overworking, most likely because most of them are doing the same thing. Why do we do this to ourselves? Primarily, this syndrome occurs in our work life, but it can carry over to our personal and family life, and it frequently does. Focusing on projects often begins with good intentions, but we can quickly and easily be overwhelmed if we do not have a plan to minimize and balance our work. Getting the projects finalized for your team, writing the copy for your website, designing the new sales brochure, or completing the 90-day marketing plan, these are extremely important. But having a balanced, healthy life, that is equally as important. One thing that I can guarantee and that we coach hard with our coaching clients is not just putting systems and structures into your business for a high level of success, but doing the same with your personal life. Isn't your personal life just a different business? Of course it is. Now, I will tell you, some will argue with me about this and say that business is their job and comparing family to a business is just wrong. But think about it. Hopefully you're passionate about the time you spend with your family. I am hoping that you're also passionate about your business and that you love what you do. And therefore each deserves love and attention to be as successful as possible. I am sure you must admit that if you're struggling with either, then likely the other one suffers as well. It can't help it. Having peace and growth in both, this is essential to high success in either. The stressful pattern is telling you to change your life. Once you get this message, it's easier to identify the steps you need to take to shift out of this behavior very quickly. So following our helpful strategies gleaned from my personal experience and from my work with coaching clients who are burned out, growing cranky, frustrated, and even depressed. These strategies immediately diminish feelings of being overwhelmed so you can refocus and make some work-life balance decisions. Number one, stop what you're doing for a few minutes and take a break. Go for a short walk, sit outside under a tree, meditate, breathe deeply, go to a movie, call a friend to have coffee and share what's going on. Whatever you are doing will still be there when you come back and you're gonna be ready to approach it with fresh eyes and energy. Number two, I want you to get a piece of paper. I want you to make two columns. In one column, list urgent things you need to do this week. In the other column, list those projects that you can delegate, hire, or barter to be done. I love this exercise because it focuses and forces us to prioritize our tasks and realize that there's gonna be items on there that are better handed off to somebody else. Next, eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. Unsubscribe to unnecessary email. Organize your desk and office to decrease clutter. Stop attending meetings. Get off of the committees and decrease volunteering at fundraisers unless you have a total passion for the organization and the cause. By engaging in all of these items, it burns valuable time that you don't have, and it just leads to an increased feeling of overwhelm and frustration at the end of the day when you realize you've spent little to no time working on the projects that will get you closer to your goals and are your passion. We are all famous for putting others' agendas ahead of our own. Next, do not spend time with people whom you do not like. Assess your friends and business colleagues. 
Do they support and honor who you are? If they're negative and they don't share your vision for your dreams, then don't spend another minute with them. Now, I know this may sound harsh, but it's proven that you are a product of the five people that you surround yourself most with. Take a long, hard look at those five people. I love hanging out with people who have achieved what I want to and are smarter than I am. Okay, I want you next to decide what is most important in your life. If you want a balanced life, you are going to have to make changes in your life to allow this to happen. That takes some time and planning, but it will be well worth the improvement in your life. This is the make a plan stage and implement. Take an action today to make a change in your life. Call a friend who will support you. Take a class to get organized or work with a coach who will support and motivate you to have a more balanced life. It all starts out easy, but after about three days having that support or accountability or even the coach to help you design a plan or system, this is going to be essential to your long-term success. And remember, at the end of the day, it is always your choice to focus forward.